all month I'm talking about keeping your dreams alive. I want you to get so focused and so on purpose about fulfilling the dreams and the desires that God has put on the inside of you. And I want you to recognize where Satan has tried to distract you. You know, Satan will use time, how much time has gone by. He'll use your age as a distraction. How old are you now? He'll use past mistakes, past disappointments, a lack of money, people. He'll use all types of things to distract you, to get you to lose your focus from your dreams. I want you to recognize that it's Satan. It's not what you've been through. It's not your age. It's Satan. He's the one trying everything in his power to distract you and to get you to lose focus. Well, in order for you to fulfill the dreams and the desires that are on the inside of you and for you to stand before God and say, I did what you called me to do, it's going to require what I believe is the number one focus is you've got to make God the target that you're aiming for. Your relationship with God has to be the bullseye in your life. It's not so much about educating yourself and learning all this leadership stuff and business things. Yes, that's very important. But God has to be the bullseye, the number one focus in your life. You know, I heard somebody say that when you pursue God, you are pursuing your dreams. You know, as you get closer and closer to God, you're going to realize more and more what he wants you to do. You're not going to be hazy about it or fuzzy. You're going to know this is what God's called me to do. You know, in Matthew, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all these things will be added unto you. In other words, as you're seeking God, then those dreams will start to come to pass. Those desires, that courage to go after your dreams is going to come from seeking God. But you know, Satan's going to try everything in his power to get you to lose sight of your relationship with God. And you think about it, when judgment day comes or that day comes that we stand before God, you don't want to say, you know, God, I'm sorry. I meant to spend time with you. I wanted to. I just never got around to it, and I'm really, really sorry. (laughs) It's too late then. And, you know, we're going to spend more time on the other side of death than we are here on earth. So our time with God has to be the number one thing in our lives. You know, I say this all the time. Time with God doesn't mean three hours a day on your knees. Time with God is just being aware that He's with you throughout the day, talking to Him throughout the day, while you're driving, while you're cooking, while you're doing laundry, just A communication with God, knowing that He's present at all times. And you think about it. These are just some things I wrote down about how God is seriously the answer to every problem you could ever face. I mean, no matter what it is, you spend time with God and He is the solution. Think about this. If you're insecure and you feel rejected, maybe you've been through a lot of rejection in your life, God's Word says that His love will cast fear out of your life. Well, rejection, insecurity, inferiorities, all of those are rooted in fear. But as you spend time with God and you realize more and more how much He loves you, His love will drive that fear out of your life. Think about this. If you're broke, you're in debt, you don't know what to do about your finances, His Word says that God rewards those who diligently seek Him. As you seek God, He's going to give you solutions. He's going to give you wisdom on how to get your finances in order. Are you sad and fighting depression? God's Word says that in His presence, there's fullness of joy. In other words, you spend time with God, you just begin praising Him and worshiping Him, even though you're depressed, you're miserable, you're tormented, whatever it is, as you spend time praising God, He brings joy into your life, joy that you can't even comprehend. That's that's all a result of just spending time with God. Are you stressed out? His word says, come away with me and you'll find rest. Spend time with God and he's going to relieve all that stress. So you will never regret spending time with God. You know, nobody ever says, man, I've spent too much time with God. (laughs) You'll never regret that. He has to be the number one focus of your life. And I'm telling you, seek first God and all these things will be added unto you. But I have to warn you, as soon as you get a plan and you get a goal to spend more time with God than you are right now, Satan will bring distractions. I mean, the first day that you set a goal to spend time with God, the baby will wake up, the phone will ring, you'll oversleep, you'll get a phone call that takes up your whole prayer time. Satan strategically puts distractions in your life 
so you won't spend time with God. Because he knows you'll overcome depression, you'll build your self-esteem, your finances are going to get in order. He knows all that. So the distractions are on purpose. You know, I heard a story the other day about when a lion tamer goes into the cage with the lion. It said that he always carries a pistol on one side and a whip on the other. But invariably, he always carries a stool. He will not go into that cage without the stool. And the story said that this is the most important thing for that lion tamer to carry. And the reason why is he said when he goes in the cage, he holds the stool like this and he thrusts the legs of it towards the animal. And what happens is that lion tries to focus on all four legs of the stool at one time. And when he does that, a certain paralysis overwhelms the lion and he becomes tame, weak, and disabled. And the reason why is because his attention is fragmented. And you know, Satan will do the same thing in your life. If he can get your attention so fragmented on all these other things in your life, you will become tame, weak, and disabled for the plan of God for your life. So you have to stay focused. You got to make God the number one thing. Just setting time aside to spend with him, to talk to him, to read his word or listen to a CD, whatever it is. But make God the number one focus of your life. Another thing, I mean, you think about Peter. When Peter was doing the impossible, walking on the water, you know, Jesus told him to come on. He's doing the impossible But as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to look at just how impossible this is, he went down. Well, the good news news is that Jesus is always there to pick us up. He's always there to get us back on track. And I want to encourage you this year to get your focus back. Get focused on the dreams that God has put in your heart. And don't allow Satan to distract you. Don't allow him to cause your attention to be fragmented. Make God the number one focus. Set some new goals in your relationship with God. And keep your dreams alive. Do something every day to keep your dreams alive. 